Okay, let's settle down. Yes. It's okay. Look, I'm taping this. Okay. Uh, we're going to uh, teach back on the uh, endocrine and respiratory system, so please settle down. Uh, these two chapters, there are only two chapters, but they're very important. Um, as I've said, when you become future nurses, the reason why we need to know anatomy is because you're dealing with human lives. And for you to know how to deal with these patients, you have to know the anatomy and physiology of the human body, right? Particularly, let's deal first with the endocrine system. Can anybody tell me the difference between an endocrine gland and an exocrine gland? Yes? Does the exocrine gland have a duct, or is the okay. endocrine gland not? It's a Correct. Very good. So basically, yes, you want to add something? Endocrine glands don't have ducts. Yeah, well, you already mentioned that, so say something different. <laughs> same time, yes? Okay, very good. At least you both have the same idea, and both of you are correct. According to her and to her, both of them said ductless. Now, it's not the one that is quack, 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 quack. No, I'm kidding. I, I had a quiz and I wrote that. What is the difference? And somebody wrote lack of D U C K, you know? Duck. I said, okay, <laughs> duck means quack, 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 quack. And there's a difference between D U C T and D U C K, right? A difference of one letter makes a big difference, right? Now, this is an English language class, so therefore make sure you have a mastery of the language, right? So, you are absolutely right. Endocrine glands versus exocrine. Endocrine, no ducts. Positive for ducts or exocrine glands, right? And if you remember, the example we had in the lecture on the skin would be, if this were the surface of the skin, there's a duct, and the sweat gland is there, the sweat that otherwise known as sudoriferous glands secrete sweat. The sweat is here. Now, how is it possible for the sweat to come out into the skin pores? Through the ducts. Now, it happens to be a different gland called the sebaceous gland, right? Remember the word sebaceous? S E B A C E O U S. It contains sebum. What is sebum? Or what is the name of the gland? Sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland because the word sebum, okay? That's oil. Sometimes my skin is oily. I could actually become a rich man. I could compete with the Middle Eastern countries. I'm joking only. Because I produce a lot of oil. So there's a duct. Allows the passage to take a tube, tube. This where it can uh, have the either sweat or, or the um, sebum to pass out. So because there is no duct, the endocrine glands, what do they do? How are they able to be distributed throughout the body? To where? Okay, you have a blood vessel here. And what does the blood vessel contain? Blood. Of course blood, don't you love anatomy already? That alone will make you love. I love anatomy. The first time I laid eyes on anatomy, what did they say? What a beautiful lady. Anatomy is my lady. The blood vessel contains blood. And obviously, whatever hormone you produce, so endocrine glands produce hormones that are released into the blood circulation. Why? Why are they released into the blood circulation? What for, what's the purpose? Yes? What? I want a, some, a very simple answer. Yes? Hmm? Huh? How? What, what happens? In order for them to what? With order, what about the target organs? What do you want them to do? Hmm? Yes? You're correct. You are in the right. If this were a thread of Facebook, you are in the right thread. In other words, your, your idea is the same as mine. So most likely you might pass a question in the test based on that idea. Do you have to have the same wavelength? Doctors and nurses might have the same wavelength, or else patients will die. Okay, you are correct. You want to reach the target organ, that means they have to what? The hormones have to go to the blood circulation so that the hormones can go where? The target organs. Reach the target organs. You know what the word reach means, right? It's that R-I-C-H, but rather what? I'm just joking. I'm just playing around with words. I love. Don't you know that knowledge and words, it's all about words? 
It's all about words. The more words you know, the more successful you become in life. I'm not saying I'm successful because I know a lot of words. But I try to know as many words as I can. I would wake up at four in the morning when I was 10 years old, I would read 10 books, five books. Sometimes I wouldn't even sleep just to read the book. There was no Harry Potter then, just what, but Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. It was in the late 60s and early 70s, right? Now, same thing here. When I say, in order to reach the target organ, R-E-C-H, because you want to get the, the target organ, right? And for them to reach the target organ, they have to travel to the five north and five south freeway, which happens to be called blood vessels. So apparently, these blood vessels allow them to travel because they have, a, they have a mission, you know? A mission to what? To reach a target organ so that they can have their effect on this target organ, right? You understand? For example, where is the thyroid stimulating hormone produced? Where? Okay, I'm getting confused now. Somebody said thyroid, somebody said tender mind became hypothalamus, somebody said? Okay, so in the field of medicine and nursing, we have to be very precise of the knowledge we use. It is not the thyroid gland, it is not the hypothalamus, but rather what? And where did you get that information? The book, and I can tell, because she, before she answered me, she looked at her notes first, and then looked at me, and said, and your load. So she's trying to be sure, right? It's good. As a future nurse, you want to be sure too. Am I following doctor's order precisely? Right? They just don't blurt out words without, am I right? I just killed someone because I came up with the wrong word and the, here it's wrong. Word wrong, wrong answer. Not only will you have patients dying on you, but at the same time what? Not passing what? A quiz here, a quiz there, and eventually what? There's your board exam. So knowledge is powerful to transform your lives that what we want is the right, proper, accurate what? Knowledge, of course. I'm just saying. Very hot today, that's why I feel hot. You know, I'm very passionate about the endocrine glands. So where are these thyroid stimulating hormones produced? Where? Anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. What is another name for this anterior lobe? Yes? Adenohypophysis. What about the posterior lobe? Neurohypophysis. In fact, in the neurohypophysis, there are only two hormones there. Is that easy to remember or very easy to remember? Okay, what are they, my dear? Oxytocin. What does ADH mean? Antidiuretic. Antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin will be the second hormone. But going back to the TSH, if you are telling me it's produced in the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, is that part of the brain? Yes. It's in the brain, right? So how does it, where is the, what is the target organ of the thyroid stimulating hormone? Thyroid. thyroid gland. So how in, is it possible for that hormone from the brains and the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland to reach the thyroid gland? How? Yes. Yes, my dear. Yes, you. I'm looking at you. No, no, this young lady here trying to evade my, yes, you. Through the blood circulation, to the five south freeway. Have you ever been to the five south south freeway? <laughs> so it covers the blood circulation, which is the target organ, right? But that's exactly why you need to understand how is it possible for that hormone to reach the target organ through the blood circulation. So from the brain to the thyroid gland. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, now we will go into the details of this, right? So let's say. Uh, Without the blood circulation, therefore, there will be no way for it to reach its target organs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. One way of studying hormones and the glands is either through a concept map or a table. Why table? Because it's a way of trying to what? Compare. What? Compare. Compress, compare, and then what? Summarize. And make it easier for you to remember what is important and what is not important. You throw them away. The garbage kind of information, you know? Although we have a smart brain, we need to be able to determine which one is important, which one is not, right? So let us try to tabulate. So if I start with the gland here, right? Okay, I start the hormones here. And I would put here what? The function of that particular hormone. So my goal is to buy a whiteboard anywhere I want. How many of you have whiteboards at home? Who told you to buy a whiteboard? I did? <laughs> I really did, I'm just joking. Of course. 
why would I try to buy, why would I recommend buying a whiteboard? In, in Walmart, it's only $17, I think, last time I went, you know. Swap made, maybe two or three dollars or five dollars, okay? As big as this in Walmart. Good. Why do you want to do that? Because you want to be someone who is going to be like me, you know, trying to summarize the information that you need to know. So I start here with the hypothalamus. Why do you think I started with the hypothalamus? Can anybody give me a reason? Yes? Releasing hormones from hypothalamus. Is the reason why? Yes? Anyone? Let's try. Is the master of the master gland. I am the master. Why is he the master of the master gland? Yes, you said that. Yes. See, you gave me the right answer, but to become smart, you have to know why, how, where, when, where? Hypothalamus. Why is it the master of the master gland? What's your name again? Jeffrey? Why is it called the master? Don't be scared with my voice. I just want to speak with a loud voice. Because for auditory visual purpose of this nice video, courtesy of Walmart, I bought this from Walmart. Yes? Cheap prices, yes? I give me, I'm giving her his time to, to think, you know? I have all this ad lib, yes? Uh, it's because um, it controls uh, what? other um, Other what? Other glands. Such like, as? Such as it's fair. Okay, and how? See? After they said why and how, how is it possible, therefore, for the hypothalamus to control the pituitary gland? Uh, because um, think, think. I want you to think. Uh, uh, pituitary gland is located uh, below the hypothalamus. We saw that there, right? I, I, that's, that's a good answer, but I want you to be more than that. Okay, it's not based on location, but rather what? Okay, I'll give you a clue. What does the hypothalamus secrete, my friend? A hypothalamus secrete uh, elimination of oxytocin. Huh? Well, the hypothalamus. I agree with you. There are only two hormones here: EDH and oxytocin. But with regards to what you said, if this were a thread on Facebook, a while ago, and I will quote you, my friend Jeffrey, you said, it is the master of the master gland. How can it be the master of the master gland? And you said, the pituitary gland. How is it going to control the pituitary Don't be scared with my voice. I just want to, for it, are you scared with my voice? Don't be scared, you know. I'm trying to create a stressful situation so that when you become a nurse and the doctor shouts at you, tell the doctor, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> F you. But if it's yes, doctor, I'll follow what you're going to do as long as don't, don't, don't kill the patient, right? <laughs> so in my limited practice of medicine in the Philippines, I never had a nurse cursing me. I'm always nice to nurses. But not only was I nearsighted, but I was also nearsighted, you know. <laughs> before I met, especially before I met my wife. I was very nice to them because they're also nice to me. They will even let me sleep when I'm on duty. Dr. Gabo, would you like to sleep? Oh my God, 30 minutes of sleep is golden. You know? Yes, okay. Already gave you enough time. I will just ad lib. <laughs> when I share these stories, I'm giving you time to think, to come up with an answer, Jeffrey. Okay, it's okay. What's your neighbor's name? Elizabeth. Huh? Elizabeth. No, no, I'm asking him, not you. Uh, What's his last name? <laughs> Lat huh? Nihon. Are you are you group mates? Yeah, and also um, on that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just okay. Okay. Yes, Elizabeth. Nervous system. It works closely. It integrates with the nervous system. So I, I can see that you are reading the, the book in your own words because that is how you learn, Elizabeth. In your own words, how is it possible? for this to control the pituitary gland. I already gave him a clue. What does it secrete? Yes, a raised, vo uh, raised voice, a raised hand. What is your name? Myra. Myra. Such as what? In the case of the thyroid simulating hormone from the pit, the dear love, the pituitary gland. What is the name of that regulatory hormone coming from the hypothalamus? I want absolute silence because I'm waiting for her. She's turning red now. She's thinking of the answer and she's smiling at me. And she's looking at her notes. It's okay because it's not a quiz yet. You are correct, regulatory hormones such as what? What is the specific 
the regulative hormone for the TSH. We said the thyroid gland is here, the pituitary gland is up there, and the TSH is released to the blood to control the release of the T3, T4 hormones, correct? So what is the name of that hormone, specific name of the hormone, as you said, regulates the anterior lobe of the pituitary, yes? Yeah. No, 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 no. Thyroid gland, pituitary gland, on top would be, according to this gentleman, is the hypothalamus. Yes, I raised hand. Huh? What? Is it melatonin? No. Nope. That's the skin. Releasing, huh? Huh? Thyroid releasing hormone. What? Thyroid What's the name? Thyroid releasing hormone. Uh, it's almost, but not complete. Almost. almost. Yes, my dear. Is it the thyroid stimulating Huh? Thyroid Where? Okay, that's already answered. It is for the one from the pituitary gland. Yes. Thyroid dopamine. What? Huh? What kind of hormone is it? Okay, okay. Let's bridge review. Oh, five seconds ago, you were in the right direction, but you got deviated. You know, like, oh, there's a nice school there. Yes? Okay, anybody? She was really in the right side. Gave me the first answer, but I wanted, yes? Mr. Toledo? <laughs> what is the name of the hormone coming from the hypothalamus that regulates the. The TSA is coming from the anterior lobe. Yes? Yes? Huh? Okay, I'll give you a clue. It's TRH. Is it there in the table? But, but it's not. What is the T stand for? TRH. It's not TSH. Jesus. Man. <laughs> Give me an R. R. Give me an S. Yes. <laughs> what? Finally. She was partly correct, but she just stopped at thyrotropin. No, I said you never said releasing hormone, did you? You did not. Unless I'm deaf and there's an earwax here. Because if not, I wouldn't be wasting my time asking those two people there. <laughs> You gave me the first word correct. You said thyrotropin, right? I did. Yeah, but you did not say R8, which is releasing yeah, hormone. Yeah, yeah. You did not, right? <laughs> no. Okay, very good. You're now telling the truth. Okay. So there's a big difference between TSH. So where does this come from? Hypothalamus. The hypothalamus? Where does the TSH come from? Okay, so anyway, before I forget, ADH, what the function? Okay, I, I have no more. I said, okay, if I answer my own question then, okay? <laughs> the thing about Walter, right? Anti means. Okay, so anti means what? Anti means against. What is diuresis? We oui, weak. Oui. Okay? So who, who do you think is the target organ of this ADH? Yeah. So that's very crucial. Understanding here, it's not superficial learning. What is it called? <coughs> Deep learning. Deep learning requires the acquisition of knowledge that is so precise, accurate, and complete. Like your ideal man. You want your ideal man to be handsome, good looking, smart, good natured, won't slap you and kick you. Complete, right? Same thing here. AD8 is produced in the hypoth uh, hypothalamus, but stored. See the big difference in the word produced and stored? If I ask you today, where is this hormone produced? ADH, where is it stored? Posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, otherwise known as neurohypophysis. And where is the target organ? The kidney. And what does it tell the kidney to do? Kidney retain the water. Especially when you have what? Diarrhea. And you are having dehydration losing so much water, you will die. But will this save your life? Yes. That will save your life, do you understand? So again, why are you all here? You save lives. But our own body will attempt to save its own body because do you think that if only this horn or part of the brain will say something, I don't want to die too. I need to release my hormones, okay? Okay, now, what about oxytocin? Uterine. Uterine what? During what? 
They born, right? What else? Okay. Okay, milk. Ejection. How is the milk ejected from the breast? Yes? Mr. David Pavarov, how is the milk ejected from the breast? David? Okay, go back to the time you were a baby. What did you do with your mom? It's breast. What did you do? Huh? Why are you ashamed to suck? Should be suck, Dr. Gamo. And what did that sucking reflex do to you? Or your mom, not you? Every time you suck the mother's nipple? Hmm? Have you ever seen a baby who was hungry with their eyes closed, they go like this? Hmm? Even with their eyes closed? Have you ever experienced that? Mm -hmm. I did that when I was a baby. I remember, I remember those days. My, my eyes closed, I said, Mom, where are you? Mom, Mom. I talked to my mom and went, okay. Oh, left breast, Mom, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just joking. Okay, David, I already gave you enough time, ad -lib. What is it? You stop the nipple, what happened next? If you're trying to create a story here, what's your storyline, you know? So, okay, I have no more time. You suck the nipple, it sends a stimulus <laughs> to the brain, thereby releasing ADH, which is stored where? Oxytocin, not ADH. Okay, where is the oxytocin stored? Posterior. love, and where is the oxytocin produced? Okay, very good. So oxytocin is stored there in the posterior lobe, producing the hypothalamus, and this oxytocin now, because you have stimulated your mom's nipple, it sends a signal there, releasing it through the blood circulation, it travels through the blood, and it goes to the myoepithelial cells. If you have read your book, it says there, myo means muscle around the nipple, myoepithelial cells, which when they contract, like myo means muscle, when they contract, the milk is released. The more the baby sucks the nipple, the more what? Milk and milk and milk is released. In fact, as long as that baby keeps on sucking that nipple, milk will always what? Have you ever seen a two-year-old boy sucking the nipple and then milk is still coming out? Have you ever seen a five-year-old boy? Have you seen the Time cover or Time magazine five, three, four years ago? The mother was standing, the left breast was exposed. The boy was standing on a stool and the mother, uh, the, the, the five-year-old boy was what? And that is the role of mothers. So we really, we should be very thankful for our mothers, right? We need to give what is theirs to, to the baby, so the baby will what? Grow, right? Even to the point of up to the age of three or five, but that's really crazy, but... <laughs> you see? As long as you have that stimulus. Now, what else? Why do you need uterine contraction? Labor. Labor, why? What's the purpose of that? Okay, time is up, my baby boy, or baby girl. Your nine, ups, nine months is up, free board and lodging, umbilical <laughs> cord, free swimming pool, you know. Time to go, and therefore, and I already showed this before, the mother in the... And it, it's because of what hormone? Push, 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 push. Thank you, oxytocin produced by the hypothalamus stored in the posterior of the pituitary gland. <laughs> Travel to the blood circulation, thereby going to the what? Yes. Uterine arteries and in the myometrium. Thank God. Oh my God, this is a very smart uh, baby, huh? <laughs> the baby came out knowing his anatomy. So apparently, the blood circulation allowed the oxytocin to go to the uterine muscle, otherwise known as myometrium, making them contract. And for those who have been mothers, how many of you have been mothers here? Okay, was it painful? <laughs> Will you be given epidural? Eventually. You did eventually, was it less painful? Okay, same with me when I had my baby boy stone came out <laughs> through my, my urethra, which is my vagina. It was very painful. And I can just imagine how much pain you will, mine was just a baby stone coming out here from the kidney. My kidney was my uterus and it came out here. And I can just feel the pain that you experience, right? So the labor pain is so much that you have to be given epidural, right? But at the same time, what made the labor possible? Oxytocin. So what do you think Dr. Gamo will prescribe a mother whose uterine contraction is slow and not intense? You know what happens is this. As, as you develop labor, 
the intensity of the contraction and the frequency becomes what? Shorter and stronger. I've never <laughs> delivered a baby boy except a baby stone but, or a baby girl. So we used to monitor this when I went to medical school, you know. It, it, initially it is every 10, 20 minutes, then it becomes every 10 minutes, then it becomes what? Five minutes. Every five minutes, every two minutes. And then as, as, as time goes by, you can feel the intensity of the pain getting stronger, stronger and stronger. And you can see the baby, what they call crowning, you know what's crowning? About to come out, crown. And guess what? When the time comes, and I remember those times when it's only, now remember the word 1cm dilated, this is the cervix here? Because when, when the baby is still way up here, the cervix is only dilated by once, like 1cm. Now we used to put our fingers inside the, the birth canal with gloves and then pre predict, oh, 1cm. And we tell the mother, okay, walk, walk, walk. <laughs> do they do, do, do it here too? Yeah. Some, some, right? some hospitals? Like it's not dilated yet. Okay, you just walk, walk. <laughs> not really jump. <laughs> Were you, were you asked to walk? Yeah. I, I think there was. I walk. And there's even this uh, YouTube uh, of an obstetrician letting the, was it the, like ex the dancer size or something before delivering the baby. But the bottom line is that it's because of this hormone. Now, what happens if you do not have enough levels of oxytocin? What do you do? All right. You give. Okay, what is the term called when you give, right. inject the mother with oxytocin, yes? Or pito we call it pitocin, yes? What is it? Induction. Induction of labor. Are you an LVM? No. Dr. Halperin, are you induced? No. Uh -huh. Were you ever induced? No. Okay. How did you know about induction of labor? Okay. To experience from friends of people who know? Mm -hmm. So what exactly is induction of labor? It's basically giving what? The synthetic form of oxytocin which happens to be what? Pitocin. Now why do we do that? Let's say you had labor pains, let's say 6 in the morning of Monday. By Monday night, your cervix is only 1 cm dilated. The intensity of the contraction and the frequency is only every 15 or 30 minutes. And the bag of water has ruptured. Is that good for your baby? No. You could die, the mother, the baby could die. So if the labor is delayed, we induce labor. The verb is induce, induction of labor is the noun. And exactly how do we do that? Dr. Gamo will tell the nurse, inject the mother with what? P-I-T-O-C-I-N, and what exactly is that? The synthetic manly form of oxytocin. Man is so smart. All man had to do was look at the oxytocin that is naturally produced under the chemistry lab, and all this is, I can easily make it in the lab, the Gamma Industries, yeah, and came up with their own pitocin. And they become, that's how they become billionaires, use their smartness to become able to come up with a product called pitocin, so we inject that, that will help save the mother's baby, okay? Now what else, what, what else can happen here? Uterine contraction to get rid of the baby for overstaying. What else? Can anybody tell, think of something? Yes? Climax. Hmm? Climax, right? climax, unfortunately, not related to climax, but more of labor and delivery. The money was like hmm? Living. Yes, yes, yes. Well, in the C-section, I remember like once the baby comes out, we the uterus gets, it's like, it, it gets boggy and then it gets why why to get a, to stop, the baby. Let, 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 stop talking let, 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 give her a chance okay? why does it get boggy why do you want to give pitocin after the baby so is born so the uterus uh, gets harder why so it firms up See, so the bleeding it, doesn't I'm trying to do a mental calisthenics with you right answer give me the right answers again okay? so the mother doesn't bleed out so okay the answer is correct how how can you prevent the bleeding Okay, very simple. I'll give you an answer to that. You are in the right track, okay? You will answer it correctly. It's very important. We know this. This is the test. You might see the answers and the questions. So. <laughs> okay. Let's pretend this is the blood vessel. What is the name of the artery in the uterine wall? It's called uterine artery. Don't you love anatomy or anything? <laughs> What's the name of the artery? Uterine artery. What's the name of the organ? Uterus. What's the name of the organ? Oh, stomach. What is the name of the artery? Gastric, because what's the name of stomach? Gastric. Other name? Gastric. Okay. What about the spleen? Spleening. Okay, uterine, what's the name of the artery? Yeah. Uterine, right? Okay. But then I'm the mother who's pregnant. These blood vessels are embedded in the wall of the myometrium, right? Myometrium. Okay. So, 
who comes out first? The baby, followed by placenta. the placenta. With placental separation, there is a sudden gush of blood. When the placenta separates, there is so much what? Vaginal bleeding, because the blood vessels are open. So if you give ketosin, therefore, with or without ketosin, normal mothers, their levels of oxytocin should be enough to make the muscles contract or relax. Now, open blood vessel. Open means blood is flowing. Mother has bleeding. So when the muscles contract because of the effect of oxytocin, what happens to the muscles? <laughs> that will stop the bleeding. But the problem is that there are certain mothers whose amount of oxytocin levels in the blood is high or low? Low. No. No. Oh, shit, what did they do here? <laughs> Apologize. When your oxytocin levels are low, they do not contract, guess what? They remain open or partially open. The blood will continuously flow. Bad or good? Bad. Can that mother bleed to death? Yes. So what will be the next recourse of Dr. Gamo? Give oxytocin. What happens if that will not also work? Hmm? You know what, what we're going to know? Yes? Sometimes, I don't, I don't know if this is probably wrong, but uh, we use something called the Backy Balloon. I'm not familiar with that. There might be something. I'm really, yeah, I graduated from med school a long time ago, but this is what we normally do. First, first, find out why. I'll tell you why. When the placenta is separated, the nurse and the doctor are supposed to examine the placenta. It's like a patty burger. Burger patty like this. And burger patty, burger patty, burger patty, burger patty. If one of the patty is not there, it's carved out, it's missing, where could it be? Of course, in the uterine wall. Let's say this is the burger patty part of the placenta that was retained. So when you have something there, will the uterine muscles be able to contract properly and con compress the blood vessels? So they remain open, that's why they continue to bleed, right? So that's the reason why it's very crucial that you examine the placenta. Now if you have a high index of suspicion that you have retained placenta, you do a what? Yes. How come you know, my friend? You are in LVN? Okay. So have you done, who does the DNC? The nurse or the doctor? doctor. Of course, the obstetrics and gynecologist. What for? Uh, to, uh, to remove all the... Retain placenta. placenta. It's like when you want to remove parts of the baby in an abortion, right? Because if not, the baby, uh, the mother will continue to bleed. If the bleeding is not stopped with the DNC, you have no choice but to what? Perform hysterectomy to save the life of that mother, because if that mother will not, if the bleeding will not stop, you have no choice. But for God willing, hopefully, the DNC will help. So always pray that there is, so let's say there is no retained placenta, then you can give what? Pitocin, you understand, okay? So do, do you understand what we're trying to do here in the field of medicine? What is not available, we give it to the mother. They lack oxytocin, we give pitocin. Not only for uterine contraction during labor, but after the baby is born, together with the placenta separation, we're gonna save the life, okay? Now, what are, so in your book, there's a list of the regulatory hormones, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, some of them will be called the, what is tyrotropin, what? Okay, so, so a lot of these, there's a big list to study them. Tyrotropin releasing hormone, what about, what about for, um, for the, um, what? Let's just write down first the uh, anterior lobe. So posterior lobe, these two. Anterior lobe, what are they? Let's start with PSH. The thyroid stimulating hormone is produced by the anterior lobe, but it is controlled by the what? Anterior. The hypothalamus. Okay. With TRH, right? Thyroid tropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus will go to the anterior lobe, make the anterior lobe release the TSH, and obviously go to the thyroid gland, right? So this is going to stimulate what? Thyroid gland, okay? Now what else? What else? TSH, what else? ACTH stimulates the what? The adrenal cortex to release its what? Two hormones, remember? Mineral corticoid and glucocorticoid, right? What are two hormones? Gluco and? Mineral corticoid, right? So it gives the cortex. What else? Growth hormone. Growth hormone. What else? Prolactin. Prolactin. For milk 
Growth hormone for growth. Male what? Production. So is there a difference with male production and injection? Yeah. Yes, there is a big difference, right? And then what else? FSH. Huh? FSH. FSH, LH, Stimulating hormone. follicle, stimulating hormone, right? So in other words, it controls the ovarian follicles, ovaries, ovarian follicle stimulating hormone. What about LH? Luteinizing hormone, important for what? Ovulation. So notice, I only put the word ovulation. What exactly is ovulation? Release of what? The what? Oocyte. Oocyte or ovum. Or egg, right? You understand what I'm saying? So apparently, luteinizing hormone causes the mother to release an egg. When does a mother release an egg? When? During ovulation, and it's what exact dates? Okay, I'll give the answer to my own question. 14 days after the first day of menstrual bleeding, let's say the mother has bleeding from July 1 to July 5. So July 1 plus 14 will give you what? So 15. That's the best time to have sex with that partner so that she becomes what? Pregnant. It's called proper timing, right? So ovulation is 14 days after the first day of menstrual bleeding. Why the first day? Why not the last day? Because the last day can be four days, five days. So what do we start counting with? First the first day of menstrual bleeding. That is granting that woman has a regular uterine cycle. Now, somebody said, Dr. Gav, how do I know my wife is ovulating? Very simple. You always carry with you a thermometer. I'm not kidding, this is something, this, I always charge $100 for consultation, but I do it for free. If you want to get pregnant, I'm just joking, of course. A thermometer will tell if there is a rise in the basal body temperature of a woman by one degree Celsius. So let's say you are a married couple in my class, and uh, what time is it now? It's 6.20, and then by 7 p.m., you check your body temperature, it rose by one degree Celsius, and you expect it to be ovulating today at this time, but you didn't know what time, but at exactly 7 p.m., Dr. Gamo, I'm ovulating. I will excuse you. You are excused from taking the test. I have reserved a hotel room for you and your husband. Uh, Timing is very, I'm just joking, of course. Do you understand? Because ovulation is 14 days, but it can happen any time of day. What else? So rise in the basal body temperature. Now, so what are they? Can you think of any other hormone? Yeah, inhibit. MSH. Okay, melanocyte stimulating hormone. So of course, melanocyte, melanin, melatonin, okay? What else? The rest, as you can see, they're not as important, but these are the main ones. Did we miss anything that's important? Okay. Now, the, 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 the regulatory hormones, for example, will come, like, uh, each of these have their own specific regulatory hormones. Like here, TSH is TRH, tyrotropin releasing hormone. What about ACTH? Cortitopin releasing hormone. Huh? Cortitopin releasing hormone. What? CRH. What is it? CRH. Tell me the exact word. Cortisol. Huh? It's either cortisol or cortisol. Okay. Cortisol. Don't speak so fast. Cortisol. Slowly. Slowly. Cortisol release Huh? It's okay. Anybody? It's either cortisol or cortisol. Cortico. Oh, Because you, 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 you missed some syllables, and that is very inaccurate. Corticotropin releasing hormone. Okay? Corticotropin releasing hormone. Anyway, each of these have their own regulatory hormone. So this is the reason why it's called the master gland, because each of those TRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, they're the ones that will control when to release and when not to release. You understand? That's how that is how powerful this hypothalamus is. To be honest with you, when I was in med school, we never we actually ignored this, but now we oh my gosh, it's really important. <coughs> okay. Now let's talk about okay, what about the pineal gland? What's the hormone? Melatonin. And what is melatonin for? Circadian what? Rhythm. Controls the sleeping waking patterns. Okay. And we go down further into the neck. What is that gland there? Thyroid. Thyroid gland and power of thyroid gland. Thyroid gland, what are hormones produced there? T3, T3, T4, and calcitonin. 
What T3 stands for what? Tri iodo thyronine. Tri iodo What about T4? Thyroxin. Say tetra. It's a new hormone, okay? It's thyroxin. H Y R O X I N E. Spelling important for me? Yes? Now, why is it called tri iodo? T R I means three atoms of iodine. Well, what's the natural source of iodine, my dear students? Natural source of iodine? Yes? You? You? What? Seafood. Okay. So, if you live near the sea, what is the enlargement of the thyroid gland called? Goiter. People who live near the sea and have access to seafood, they don't develop goiter. People, 200 years ago, people live in the mountains, they develop goiter because they have no access to the sea. And they recently have the supermarkets. What did we put in the salt? Iodine, to avoid people from developing what? Goiter, according to what? The World Health Organization mandate, okay? Now, what are these two hormones for? Keyword is what? Metabolism. Can anybody tell me exactly what is metabolism? Miss Miliara. Do you know what is Miss Metabolism? Miss Miliara? Anybody? See which cells utilize their energy. energy. What is, okay, in the first four chapters of this class, I believe we talked about metabolism. Does anybody remember? Okay, it's the sum of all the chemical reactions. It could either be anabolism, which is to build, or catabolism, which is to what? Break down. Okay, make sure. What is metabolism again? The sum of all the chemical reactions where? In each cell, which make up the tissue, which make up the organs. So do you need these two hormones in your bone cells? Yes, that's the reason why you become taller and bigger. So it is not just the growth hormone to make you tall and become six feet, but also what? T3, T4. In fact, if you're hypothyroidism patient, hypo means low levels of thyroid, this infants and children becomes what? Dwarfism is present in these women, uh, in these children. Mm -hmm. Now, will that also affect the brain development in a child with low levels of this hormone? They become what? Mentally retarded. That's the reason why if you have decreased T3, T4 in an infant and child, this word is what? Cretinism or cretin. If somebody tells you you are a cretin, tell them, same to you, thank you. That's an insult because that means you're not only mentally retarded, but you're also what? Vertically challenged. <coughs> okay, so it means we were probably only two or three feet high. So what is the treatment here? Thyroxine. Okay, we give what? Levothyroxine. Which is essentially what? Sorry. Replacement, hormone replacement with levothyroxine, Synthroid. Isn't it amazing? Here we lack oxytocin. What did Dr. Gamma prescribe? Pitocin. Who made pitocin? Smart men and women. What about here? Who made this? Natural or man made? Levothyroxine. Oh, man made again. Who made this? A smart man who wanted to become a billionaire. Studied under the chemistry lab. Oh my God, I can easily make this. That's the difference between people who are doers and smart and people who are smart but are not doers, okay? Hopefully we will belong to that part we are doers eventually in the, in the future, right? I have a cousin whose daughter had this at a very young age, like less than one year of age. How do you know? Because you can tell by the, the, the action of your children whether they're smart or not. And the child is now 25 years old, no longer a child, but has kids, back to normal. He's 5'5", five, five, normal height, because they were able to intervene at a very young age. Do you understand? Okay? Now, so these are important. So it affects all the body cells, bone cells, brain cells. Now, calcitonin, what's the role of calcitonin? I'll just answer. Lower blood calcium. It removes the calcium from the blood. This is the bones. There's a blood vessel there. The calcium in the blood goes to the bone. Where's the calcium found? In the blood, in the blood vessels. So this hormone allows the calcium in the blood to go where? In the bone. Would that make the bone stronger? Okay. Lowers the blood calcium because it allows what? The calcium in the blood to go where? 
to the bone, making the bone stronger. In fact, in my limited practice of 10 years, I used to prescribe this in the form of a nasal spray. It's what's called mea calcic. Calcic means calcitonin. Very effective, but very expensive. Only my rich patients would buy them from the United States and can afford. So I would steal from there to pay gift to my, <laughs> my poor patients. Paro Tharo, what is, a, what is PTH? Parathyroid hormone is the opposite of calcitonin, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what? Calcium. Increased Calcium. blood culture. Low, from the bone. Exactly. It makes what? It goes what? Bone to the blood. Opposite. Okay? It's found inside, embedded in the thyroid gland. Now, let's go further down. What is the name of the Thymus. endocrine gland here? Thymus. In the area of the chest? Thymus. Thymus. So what's the name of the hormone? Thymosin, oh don't you love anatomy? And what does thymosin do? Maturation. Maturation of what cell? Which one? T. T or T? T. T, T what? T cell or T lymphocyte? Remember the T cell or T lymphocyte is a white blood cell producing the red bone marrow. In the bone, the red bone marrow, the T cell is produced there. It travels to the blood. It takes its what? It vacation time where? In the thymus to walk, to mature. What do you mean by mature? Do you, do you know what the word mature means? Okay, I, I know it's too much for you right now. It's called immunocompetence. Immunocompetence means to make them become what? What do white blood cells do? Fight the enemy. It's like your what? Count Pendleton. How many of you are military people here? Train at Count Pendleton, different place. So it's just a cup, cup ground for training people to fight, to kill people, right? Oh no, in this case, kill bacteria. <laughs> so you want to train the white blood cell, mano in mano, to kill the who? Bacteria. bacteria, because who is the enemy here? So where is the training going to take place? In the thymus gland. Which particular type of cell? It's easy to remember why. What is the first letter of thymus? What's the first letter of T cell? How can you forget? You cannot. And how many of you will forget that next term? Some will not forget, some will forget. T cell or T lymphocyte is producing the red bone marrow, goes to the thymus gland through the blood circulation because that is how they travel. Away is my drawing, I'd already erase it. And that's where they mature. Let's go down. Pancreas. Move it here. What about the pancreas? What is the hormone there? Is it the islets or what? Langerhand. Langerhand, very good. Okay. And pancreas, islets of Langerhans, two hormones, alpha cell, glucagon. glucagon. What's the role of glucagon? Increase blood glucose. What about the beta cell? Insulin. Insulin, what does insulin do? Okay. It decreases blood glucose. Okay. I want you to observe this very carefully. Is this hormone important, the insulin hormone? It lowers the blood glucose in what way? I'll show you why. This is, this is the simplest way I can think of. This is the cell, nuclear cytoplasm, this is the cell. The cell. How many cells did I make here? Three. Three. What, is sound, what is the name of the smallest blood vessel that is found beside the cell? Capillaries. capillaries. So what's a capillary again? Oh, smallest blood vessel. It's a capillary, it's a smallest blood vessel where the exchange of substances, hormones will occur. Okay? So, very squamous cell, flat cells. Only one red blood cell can go through, only one red blood cell. Oxygen goes here, carbon dioxide goes there. Now, in the case of insulin, when you eat, you put the mouth, food into the mouth. You swallow, you chew and swallow the food. Go to the esophagus, stomach. Upon reaching the esophagus, stomach, you digest, digest. It gets very small. It's like a benderized food. What's the purpose next here? The food goes where? Into the wall of the small intestine. And what does the wall have? Muscles and blood vessels. 
So what is found in the blood vessel? Blood. So whatever you eat goes where? To the blood. In the small intestine. It's 20 feet long. The question now is, that's why if the food contains sugar or glucose, after a meal, what happens to the blood glucose level? Increase. After a meal, you eat, and the food contains glucose for G, G is here. The blood level goes up. In response to elevated blood glucose levels, what will the beta cells do in the pancreas? They allow it to travel to the blood circulation, travel to the blood, and release what? I. What is I? Coming from what cell? Of what gland? What part of the pancreas? Islets off. Okay, I want to take, take a look at this. What is this glass? Of what? A key to what? The cell. To open the door. Okay. So imagine this to have what? One, two, three doors. One, two, three doors. One, two, three. In physiology, these are called receptors. Receptors for what? Eye or insulin, right? For me to open the door, I need to have the right key. Have you noticed the shape of the, the grooves here? This has to match the door or else it won't be able to take effect. So this is, let's say, insulin. The door knob should have a matching groove. So how many keys do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many? Nine. Very good. Very easy to count. I love math too, right? Nine. So for me to open all of these, I need what? One, two, three, four, five, six. So if, you, if the key is here, in response to high levels of glucose after a meal, the eye will attach to the receptor, which happens to be the doorknob, and then what does it do? Close. Open the door. When the door is open, who will enter the cell? Who will enter the cell? Who will enter the cell? Why? Why is there a need for glucose to enter the cell? Yes, my friend, over there, near the wall. Yes, anybody? Cell of course, glucose is the ultimate source of energy. Aside from proteins and carbohydrates and fats, the simplest source of energy in the Krebs cycle, in chemistry. Remember, how, that's how you generate ATP, right? Okay, now, what happens if there is no key? If there is no key, or zero key, will the glucose be able to enter the cell? No. The glucose will remain where? Well, That's why you have hyperglycemia, that is type 1. Type 1 DM. What is type 1? Autoimmune. Destroy all what? All beta cells are what? Destroyed. So how much insulin is produced? Zero. zero. What? Zero. Juvenile, young children. Or a young. Now, what is this room? Pretend this room. I get out. Okay. Can you demonstrate? Let's pretend this room. Can you move the camera and no. focus? Camera, follow me. Okay. Pretend that this room is what? A cell. So what will this be? The cell membrane, right? How many walls does the cell membrane have here? One, two, three, four. How many doors do we have here? One. Fire hazard, of course. <laughs> I'll be in trouble if this is being recorded. Okay, uh, are you still able? Yeah. Okay. This is the doorknob. The doorknob has. For me to open this, what do I need? Key. Key. The key. The insulin, right? Now pretend that this is the blood vessel. What's inside the blood vessel? Blood. 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 Okay. The blood is there. It contains the blood vessel. This blood. This is the cell. There's only one door. I am Dr. G, G for glucose. Okay, glucose is in the blood, right? This is the eye, the insulin. I turned my mouth <laughs> Open the door. Where am I now? In the cell. Inside the cell. Thank God I have what? The key to open the? The So I'm in the blood, I enter the? Cell. And is the cell happy? Yes. yes. Of course. ATP. Generate ATP, everybody is happy. Now, the problem is there is no key. Yeah, I'm to be against it. Will glucose be able to open the door and enter the cell? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can't enter the cell, where do I stay? 
And how come the blood levels of glucose? Elevated. Is that called hyperglycemia? Yes. And what do you think Dr. Gamo will tell the nurse to inject the patient with? So then. Don't you see the beauty of anatomy and pathophysiology? Oh shit, I can't stand now. <laughs> Combine? What is that? Okay. So the bottom line, therefore, is if you know anatomy and physiology, there is nothing that you cannot answer with in the nursing board exam. Type 2, on the other hand, is what? Little. In other words, you are expected to have nine doors, nine keys. In this case, in type 2 diabetic adult <coughs> onset, the beta cells, they're lazy. They only produce what? Let's say two, two I, but they were supposed to need how many doors? Nine. Nine, you only have two keys. See, so because there's only one key, so that means they have to, remember, have you ever been to a movie house and you buy tickets? And guess what? Only one person is selling tickets. What happens to the line of people waiting to be able to enter the movie house? You have to wait for your turn to get the ticket, right? The same thing here, why? Okay, wait for your turn, open the door, go. Open, go, see? Because only little insulin, right? Another problem in type 2 is that you could have eye or insulin, but the problem is what? Resistance. The receptor. It's called insulin resistance. What exactly is resistance? When I opened the door, the presumption was this key would match what? The door. The, what do you call that thing? The entry point for the key, right? The group should match. What happened if some crazy guy put an epoxy there or put something there? Will I be able to open? Mm -hmm. So in patients with type 2, the other possibility there is what? Resistance. Defective receptors or equal that insulin resistance. But fortunately, that not all of them have that problem. So some of them can go in, can go in. So what's the difference here? In type 1, there is absolutely no glucose. Right. What will be the alternate source of energy? Fat. Fat, precisely. Fat is used because there is zero, and when you use fat as a source of energy, you develop uh, ketones. And what are ketones? Acidic substances is called diabetic keto acidosis. Here, it's different. You don't produce that because you still have little. Do you understand? Okay. When we wore elephants, where do we inject the insulin? Where? Why sub Q? Because it's not, it doesn't go into muscle or, or okay. venous. What did you learn? Who, who, who was your teacher on the skin? You. Oh, oh, okay, I was kidding. <laughs> First layer? Second layer? That's the skin. What's the layer below the skin? What does cutaneous mean? Huh? Skin is cutaneous. What does that mean? Under the skin. What's another name for subcutaneous layer? Hypo. Dermis. What does hypo mean below the dermis? What is preponderantly found in this area here? Fat and blood vessels. Fat and what? Fat and what? So when you inject sub Q, where do you want the insulin to go? amazing. Everything has an explanation here. I want my nurses to be as smart as that. Why did Dr. Gamo or the doctor, it doesn't have to be me, why did the doctor ask you to inject sub Q? Because this is where the much of the blood vessels are found. And where do you want the insulin to go? To the blood. To the blood. Because that is where the glucose is found. Are you not excited? That when you inject the, the insulin there, it has to be sub Q layer. Not IV, not internet, but sub Q. Now, where is the best place to inject? Hmm? Huh? Arm. Are you on LVN? No. Unfortunately, I can tell. It's okay, I just try to humiliate you. Yes? Okay, uh, look at my booty. Where do I inject the insulin? Abdominal wall. Somebody would say stomach. No, stomach is too deep inside. I, think, I know what they mean. I, you will inject into the stomach. No, no, no it's not the stomach. What? No. Abdominal wall. Why? What, what do you think is found in the abdominal wall? The skin has too much fat. Even this is not actually in the skin. It's really more than the skin. 
I used to have a one six pack of six pack of rectus of dung, that's one pack of fat. So why here? Does anybody know? Okay, I'll answer my own question. Uniform what? Uniform, what is the letter? A absorption. But do you need to rotate, do you need to rotate the injection sites? Why? Again, I'll answer my own question. If you don't, you destroy what? And that will come out in core nursing. Will that come out in the nursing board exam too? Why is there a need to rotate the injection sites? You understand what I'm trying to do here? I'm trying to prepare you for nursing board exams. You might say, oh, Dr. Gam, you're overwhelming us with so much information, but this is exactly what you're supposed to do. Preparing yourself for what? The nursing board exam, because that is what will make you pay you what? Student loans. How many of you want to pay your student loans? That's why you have to get an A in this class if you want to. I'll yeah, just get, get. Of course, A minus is B is fine. Well, 73 is still fine. <laughs> but please, do better than 73. Por favor. Because if you get a 73 in anatomy, what do you think is your going to be in physiology? I work with numbers, I deal with numbers. I can extrapolate. The first grade score is 73. I always hope and pray it will become 75, it becomes 80, 85, 90. If it remains 73, 73, then my extrapolation was correct. I deal with numbers. Okay? Okay, going back to the, do you have any questions regarding diabetes? Now, is the pancreas also an endocrine, exocrine gland? Yes, because of the pancreatic ducts, pancreatic enzymes. So it's a unique gland, both exocrine and endocrine, right? Yeah. Now, let's go to the adrenal gland. What about the adrenal gland? Cortex yes? Cortex produces. Okay, the adrenal gland has two parts. Cortex and adrenal, cortex, adrenal cortex, cortex, and what? Medulla. Cortex, two things. Gluco, what? Glucocorticoid. Corticoid, which is cortisol. Mineral cortisol. And the other one is what? Aldosterone. Mineral law. Corticoid. Corticoid. Or corticosteroid. Which means they come from cholesterol, which means fat. It's aldosterone. Now, because there is no more time, I answer my own question. Cortisol, glucose, glucose, increased blood glucose. When? Stress. Stressful situation to survive. You need your sympathetic nervous system at the same time, your adrenal cortisol. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to have blood sugar elevation? Because you have to have the energy to run away from the burning building or somebody with a gun, right? What about aldosterone, two things? Dehydration. Water. And sodium what? Retention. And the other one is what? Potassium what? Potassium what? Excretion by what organs? Kidney. Kidney. And potassium is excreted via the urine, right? Are you following me? Yeah. Who will retain the water and sodium? What organ? Again, by the kidney. So, therefore, what is the target organ of this hormone? What is the target of the hormone? Now you might be wondering, what the heck do I really need to know this Dr. Gamo? Who teaches pathophysiology here? Me. And what did they say? If you get an A in pathophysiology, you are 100% passing the nursing board exam. I'll tell you why. Very briefly, I'll tell you why. Cushing's disease versus Addison's disease. Okay, Cushing's disease, high levels of hormones. High, high means elevated, Cushing's disease. So if you have high levels of this hormone, what happens? You have hyper what? Glycemia due to high levels of cortisol. Your blood sugar will always be elevated. Two, what about the effect of aldosterone? You retain sodium, retain what? Sodium. You develop hyper what? Nat what is natremia? Sodium levels is high in the blood. And you even have to memorize the normal values. And you retain what? Water. And if you retain water, what happens to your weight? Your weight will what? You go up, what about your blood volume? Go up because you're retaining water in the blood. And what happens to your blood pressure? Increase. Okay. Now, what about potassium levels? Decrease. 
Okay, because it will excrete potassium in the kidney, you develop what? Hypokalemia. What is hypokalemia? Low levels of potassium less than 3.5. In the normal board exam, you will not give you the normal values of sodium and potassium. You have to memorize them. So everything on the right will be what? The opposite. That is how you prepare for the nursing board exam. What happens if we interchange these two? You're going to be in deep stool. Because the treatment and management will be totally different. Here you have hypokalemia. Here you have what? Hyperkalemia. Low potassium in the blood. What about here? Okay. If this were a nursing intervention question in the nursing board exam, what does banana contain? Who do you think will benefit from a banana? A patient with Cushing's or a patient with Alzheimer's disease? Why? And that is how you pass the board exam. What happens if you say, I will give a banana here? What did you do to the patient? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Kill the patient. Because why? You are not a graduate of West Coast. You come from a different nursing school. You came up with the wrong answer. And by giving bananas here, you're actually making the condition what? Better or worse? Worse. And what happens if you have high levels of potassium? By putting, giving more potassium? Can that lead to cardiac arrest? How many of you watched the James Bond movies in the 60s? Are you were not born yet? Maybe you, you could watch them, you know, you can Netflix, you know? Oh, my name is Bond, James Bond, you know? What's that, what is the famous British guy? Sean Cannery, yeah? You know how they kill people? Potassium chloride, KCL. Potassium chloride, KCL. Why? Because if you put that in a syringe, it is transparent and clear. I'm not trying to, my God, don't give. I hope you don't do this. My God, please don't be crazy. I don't want you to be in the headlines, one of the UCL West Coast students. In that movie on James Bond, the Russian and the American spies are fighting, right? So they would kill the opposite. They would they pretend to be doctors. They go to the hospital and then inject what? So it causes you to go into cardiac standstill or cardiac arrest. That's the reason why, please, that's the reason why I'm not coming up with jokes just to, my purpose of coming up is to make you learning fun, but at the same time, my intention really is for you to be aware of what you learn here is important and what kind of knowledge, accurate, precise, the right knowledge that is going to save lives. We do not, to, do we give potassium chloride here? Yes. Yes, we do because it's low but under cardiac monitoring. Believe me, when I tell my nurses I want to give KCL, I give specific the dose, and I would say they're under cardiac monitoring. That means I have to have a cardiac monitor when you're giving this. I want to have evidence of over giving, which leads to this, which can kill people. Both of these are not good, by the way. Do you understand? Okay. Banana, yes. No banana. What about saline solution? What's saline? Contain sodium, sodium chloride. Salt is sodium chloride. Am I going to give saline solution here? No. No, because it's already high. What about here? Yes. Remember uh, IV? So if I say saline, IV solutions, sodium chloride, sodium. Here, no. High already. Here, low. Yes, we can. Saline means to give IV fluids with saline. And that is how you apply your knowledge here. Why am I doing this as early as now? Because most of you most might, may just remember, just memorize this and then forget what it's supposed to be. When I teach pathophysiology, do I spend time reviewing this with students? Why? Some of my students in pathophysiology took their anatomy somewhere else. And worse, they even took it five years ago. Oh my gosh. What do they remember? <laughs> what do they remember? <laughs> And what do they remember like, during the exam? Like, yeah. And what is their score during the exam? No. Nothing. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> and then sometimes they blame me, Dr. Gamma, you don't know how to teach. Oh. And students are not, not passing. Who do they blame when they're not passing? Teacher. Who's blaming the teacher? I'm just teaching here. Is there anything to do? They have nothing to blame. Okay, going back to this, therefore. Now, adrenal medulla 
That's just adrenaline, epinephrine, noradrenaline, sympathetic neurotransmitter, bronchodilate, increased heart rate, everything to do with sympathetic, right, to survive. In fact, we inject this to people with what? Right. Asthmatic patients, EpiPen, epinephrine, medulla, because it causes bronchodilation, saves your life, yeah? You understand? Now, so we talked about pancreas, adrenal gland, and then, of course, another name is suprarenal gland, right? Okay. Now, let's move on to uh, the reproductive organs, right? So, man, it's what the male go at. And what's the name of the hormone? And secreted by what cell? Yes? Very good. The interstitial cell secretes testosterone, the male secondary sexual characteristics. When you turn pu during puberty, like me, when I was 11, 12 years old, I used to be this tall. After puberty, I became almost six feet, but not quite. I, feel, I, I was crying the whole time. Oh my God, I want more, more. They stopped at five, nine, and three fourths. But still, I played center in my basketball team. I was the tallest in my class, so. The class were five, five. But still, I hated growth hormone because I wasn't given enough. Five, nine, and three fourths. Now, therefore, therefore, Testosterone is what? Male hormone. It also helps in the growth and development. And then what? Axillary hair, pubic hair, bigger muscles, change in voice, right? Women, what's the female go at? Ovaries, and what do they secrete? What hormones? Estrogen and progesterone. Why is progesterone important? Maintenance of what? Pregnancy, you know that, right? What is the first letter of pregnancy? And the first, the first letter of progesterone. So, can anybody explain why is that important? Perfect. Prepares the uterine lining. It took a man to answer my question. So, it, in other words, before when you get pregnant, you want the baby to grow in that nice environment, a thick wall of endometrium. There will be more blood vessels so that the baby will have all the food they need. So it, the wall becomes thicker because in preparation for the implantation of the fertilized egg. So you would expect the progesterone levels to go up. What happens if you did not, not become pregnant because your partner was wearing a condom? Or abstinence, you know? No sex honey for one month. I'm preparing for the nursing board exam. Dr. Gamma told me not to be pregnant for the next six months. You'd end up having regular menstrual bleeding. In other words, Women have menstrual bleeding because there's a drop in the levels of what? So the moment, you, because you did not get pregnant, the, drop, the levels of progesterone will drop because there is no need to maintain any pregnancy because you never become pregnant. In other words, the thick wall becomes what? It dies. That's the reason why when a woman is menstruating, I was told, I don't know, I've never menstruated, it's not just blood coming out but part of the endometrial wall I don't know, I hope you realize that, right? So when you examine the blood coming out, it's not just blood and blood clots, but part of your what? No. Endometrial tissue. If you doubt what I told you, okay, you can examine. Okay. Under the microscope, but it should be part of the sloughing off. S-L-O-U-G-H-I-N-G means to slough off means what? Sloughing or slough means it will come out together with the blood. Do you understand? Okay. Now, the respiratory system. What's the difference between upper versus lower? Where does lower begin? Okay, very good. I like this class. Very smart. Okay? So, I'm not a very good uh, illustrator. My kids, my sons and daughter are good artists. So, let's say this is your nose. The nose is in there. And the mouth is there. The chin is here. Okay? So, you breathe through the nose. Food through the mouth. But eventually, you end up with what? Okay, you have two openings here. You go like this. And you have the what? The larynx made up of what? So you have what? Mouth, nose, you have what? Nasopharynx. Oral what? Pharynx, and then what? Laryngo. Pharynx. Pharynx means throat. So remember, here you have, what do you call the opening of the larynx? The glottis, and what is that cartilage above the glottis in front? Epi, epi what? Glottis. glottis. Epi means above the glottis, what's the name of the opening? Glottis. glottis. 
What's the name of the cartilage that's supposed to cover the glottis? Epiglottis band cartilage, okay? Then what we call the part of the thyroid that is called Adam's apple? Thyroid what? Cartilage. And then the ring, the signet ring is called what? Cricoid what? Cartilage. And there are so many other cartilages there, arytenoid, cricoarytenoid. But these are the two big ones, or three big ones, epiglottis, cartilage, cartilage, cartilage. Thyroid is your Adam's apple. Now why is it called Adam's apple, Mr. Palogan? Why is it called Adam's apple? Like, what's the Bible? Of course. Yeah. When Adam, who gave the apple to Adam? Eve, who tempted Eve to make Adam get the apple? The snake or serpent? No, this is biblical, okay? Uh, and this is supposed to be a joke, so. So when Adam ate the apple and he remembered God, oh, thou shalt not eat of the apple, and it got stuck there. <laughs> And then Adam said, oh shit, forgive me, Lord. <laughs> Is that what Adam said? I'm just joking, I don't know. I'm just, I, I hope you're not going to be mad at me, okay? I'm just joking, of course. I, I, my idol is, Tra you know Trevor Noah? Huh? On, uh, you, that's how we see your study, right? Yeah, He's the one on the uh, Daily Show. He's a comedian, I want to be like him. So. <laughs> So when I said the word S-H-I-T, I didn't mean it, I might be in trouble with the, I'm a Christian too, so you know. <laughs> and it got stuck there. But the good thing, it was not absorbed there, so God forgave Adam, because forgiveness is a virtue, right? So anyway, so it's called Adam's apple. It got stuck there, Adam's apple. Men are more prominent, so look at mine. Mr. Leon, you see it? Yes. Very big, right? Big. And what's below that? Cry coin, I was below that. Trachea. <coughs> so what do you have here? Okay. Like a tracheal rings, right? Tracheal rings. And then what happens here? It divides into two. It's called what? The carina. The carina, C E R I N A. And then the primary what? Bronchus. Bronchus. And then followed by secondary. And then what? Tertiary, Tertiary what? So they're all what? Made of cartilages. And then finally, you have the bronchioles. Why are bronchioles different? Because they're lined with what? Lined with what? Smooth muscles. Bronchioles. The wall has smooth muscles. So what happens to the smooth muscles? For example, with asthmatic patients, you have an allergy to pollen, dust, the hair of your boyfriend or girlfriend, the hair of dogs and cats. It triggers an allergic reaction. You smell them, you're exposed to an allergy. This will cause the muscles to what? Go into muscle spasm or bronchospasm or contract. And what happens to the airways? They narrow. And when they narrow, what happens to the oxygen going in? Less. That's the reason why they have. Have you ever heard the sound? Are they having a good time? How many of you are asthmatic here? I dare we ask this question. You have an inhaler with you yes. now? Yes, I do. Where is it? Go show it. Show me the money. What about you, Mr. Tilson? Are you asthmatic too? Who is asthmatic? Is Canal asthmatic? Do you still have a tax no more? Do you have an inhaler with you right now? Yes. Where is it? You say the same answer to my same question. So how long will it take you to travel to your car? She's gonna borrow here. Yeah. So okay, yeah, okay. She will borrow, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I was joking, I, I had the same class. And some of them, we were in the second floor then, and then I asked, where's your inhaler in the car? I said, how long will it take you to walk from there to the car? Five minutes. How long will it take you to become brain dead? Five minutes. <laughs> if you don't believe me, try, okay. But then count five minutes. <laughs> okay. So how many of these do you have? Millions, believe me. I counted them individually in my cadaver. <laughs> They're microscopic, by the way, right? So, my bronchioles. We call them terminal bronchioles. Now, what do you find at the end? Air sac, or alveolus, or alveoli. Lined with very flat squamous cells to facilitate the exchange of what? What we call the capillaries in the lung. Pulmonary what? Capillaries, 
And what are capillaries again, class? Smallest blood vessel. And what is found in the blood vessel? Blood. blood. Amazing. And only one red blood cell can go through in any capillary for that matter. So when you inhale the oxygen from high to low, and what do you do with the carbon dioxide? Out from high to low. Do you understand? Exchange of gases occurs there, right? Now, so where does LRTI? OR, what is URTI? Upper respiratory tract infection. Or if I remove the eye, upper respiratory tract above. What is lower respiratory tract? Larynx and below. If you are preparing for the board exam, always remember these. Anything that affects the larynx, the trachea, and all these things, is that something you have to be aware of? If you're choosing an answer in the exam questions, and you say, which one would you watch out for? If the word is laryngeal edema is present, would that be the possible answer? Edema means swelling of the larynx, which will cross this opening here, and you'll stop breathing, you die. Or laryngeal swelling or edema, right? Or about you say bronchospasm and bronchoconstriction? You narrow the airways, again, affect the airway. That's why we used to call it ABC, that's called CAB, airway, breathing, circulation. Anything affecting airway, breathing, circulation, or blood circulation, something you have to study for the nursing board exam. Okay, now, so, you inhale through the nose. Can you inhale through the mouth? Yes, right? Now, what is found in the nose? You have a turbinate, right? The uh, what, what do you call those turbinates yeah. there? Hmm? Yes, concha, concha. It's like, remember the concha, the snail, the snail, uh, you know, the, 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 the sea? There are turbinates, superior, middle, inferior. And apparently, what do you call those air spaces here? Sinuses. The bony air spaces are sinuses. They contain what? Air, right? But what is found in the wall? Membrane. Mucous membrane. What do mucous membranes secrete? Mucus. Why? Because we want the mucus to go where? Into the nose. Paranasal sinuses, paranasal, frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, maxillary, the largest. It came up in the quiz, right? Oh. I'll have in the quiz today, okay. So, the paranasal sinuses are the largest with the maxillary, right? Guess what? The purpose of the sinuses is to produce the mucus and it should go where? Into the nose. Why? What for? Miss G, what for? I can tell you're busy when you're looking for the answer in your cell phone or since you're Googling something there. Let's find out if you were paying attention to our... Yes, Miss G? What do you mean? Okay, I can tell. Okay, what's the purpose of the mucus? Of the mucus? In the nose. In the nose in order to catch all the bacteria. Very good. So she'll see knows the answer even though she's busy detecting her boyfriend or something. Yes, you are absolutely right. Trap the dust particle, foreign body, or bacteria so that it will not enter the lung. And when this dust particle and mucus dries, it becomes your what? Booger. And what is exactly is booger rectomy? <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's a new word coming from my medical dictionary. According to Dr. Gamo, booger rectomy, the appendectomy, surgical removal of the appendix, tonsillectomy, or the surgical removal of the tonsils, booger rectomy. <laughs> booger rectomy is the surgical removal of the booger with the use of a scalpel called the finger. It's defined as the insertion of the finger into the nostril in an upward rotatory motion. <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. Okay? But do you need mucus there? Yes, it traps the dust. It traps the foreign body, right? What else? What, what else can the mucus do here? Very good. Humidify the air. Do you know what humidify, but what does it mean? Hmm? Humidify. Like, I want a humidify for this patient, the nurse, Gayani. What exactly do you mean by humidify? Again, your answer is correct, but I want you to be the smartest person in the world. You have to be able to explain in your own words, Dr. Gamo, I gave you the right answer, but what exactly do you mean by to humidify? I think the water. Okay, very good. Adding water to where? Yeah. Very good, give me five. So when you humidify, the mucus contains water. <coughs> so as the air enters, it's exposed to what? the moisture provided by the water in the mucus. Humidification is necessary because why? The lung is wet. You never have a dry lung. So you're preparing the entry of the air that is wet. 
Have you ever been to the hospital where you have these oxygen sources on the wall that there's water bubbling? Yes. See, wetting the water. So uh, what the water present there, it bubble. It's exactly what it does. Humidification. Now what else? So you want to humidify the air, you want to mucus trap the air particles that are dust, what else? Okay, what, what did you say? What will warm the air? Okay, I like this answer, very good. Because what kind of animals are we? Are we warm-blooded or are we warm-blooded? <laughs> there you go. Warm-blooded animals have warm blood. So you want not only to humidify the air or to moisten the air with the presence of water in the mucus, you want to trap the dust, but at the same time, you also want to warm up the air. So where do you find the blood vessels? In the wall. So today, or during the break, go to the... Is there any mirror in the women's yeah. restroom? Okay. And you look inside and go like this. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what do you see inside? Hair. Hair. <laughs> Can it also help trap the dust? Yes. yes? What else? The mucus is what? Membrane is what? Are the, uh, it's red and pink because why? A lot of blood vessels will warm the air. So you want to warm the air, you want to humidify the air. Now, if you were to ask, you know what's aspiration pneumonia? When you have a patient, instead of going to the esophagus here, the esophagus is here, it goes here. Normally, the epiglottis was supposed to cover this. That should not go there, right? You want to prevent it from going to the lung. What should the epiglottis do? Glottis or co cover it. But sometimes, like especially if you, so please do not do this. A nurse feeding a patient while lying down, is it good? No. Very bad. Because they can aspirate. You know what aspirate means, right? Very bad. Now what happens? The food will enter here. Now which do you think will it go, right? Primary bronchus or left primary bronchus and why? Yes, yes, the, 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 let's give him a chance. What's your name, my friend? Hmm? Okay, why, why, which one is your answer, right or left? Based on your readings of the book. Remember, it's blended learning, so you have practically read the book cover to cover or chapter to chapter. Right or left? And why? No, no, okay. What's the name of your partner to the left? Your neighbor? Very good. I like this guy who knows the neighbors. Nancy, would you like to help? He wants to call a friend. Would you like to call a friend? Yes, said Nancy. Uh, it would be the right one because it has three bones. The, the right bronchus has three lobes, and the right lung has three lobes. The right has three lobes and the left. The lung, but I'm talking about the right primary. What is a feature of the right primary bronchus that makes it more predisposed to aspiration? Yes. Wider. Huh? Wider. wider. Very good. Wider, bigger, wider. What else? Shorter. Shorter, of course. So I have two words: wider, shorter. What else? Huh? Who said something? Steeper, exactly. What do you mean by that? So instead of like this, it's going to be like this. Steeper, which means it can easily what? By effect of what? Gravitational pull. It's steeper, which means like more, more vertical rather than horizontal. Again, what are the features of the primary bronchus? One, wider, two, shorter, three, steeper, which means it's more what? More vertical rather than horizontal. How many of you drink alcohol here? Okay. What happens if you drink too much, you become intoxicated, you're lying down in the bed, and then... You lie down there and you go like this. Pretend this is my bed. I don't know if you can see in the video, but... And what do you do? <laughs> Can you aspirate? Yes. And can you die of aspiration pneumonia? Yes. I'll see you in heaven. <laughs> Repair a space for me there. If I am good up to I'm bad, I'll see you in hell. I'm just joking, of course. Okay, you understand, class? So, like if, for example, I say laryngeal edema or laryngitis. Bad or good? Yeah. Very bad. Phaco bronchitis or laryngo. Well, you will learn this all this in part of the Laryngo, I call it LTV. Laryngo, phaco bronchitis in young infants. 
very bad because you have gone up this way. Now, what is found in the glottis? Vocal cord. Vocal what? Which one is the true and which one is the false? True and false. Huh? Which one is true and which one is false? Vocal cord. Which one is the false? Vestibular what? Fold. Cord. Fold. Which one is true? Vocal. Fold. Do you understand? Okay. So, what is the purpose of your vocal cords? That's why when you say larynx, they always say of the larynx as this. In the vocal cords, it's something like this. Epiglottis, glottis, vocal cords. The true and the false. The true and the false. Which one do you think will vibrate? True. True. So, for example, if I say, the hills are alive with the sound of music. You like my voice? Do you think I should join American Idol? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement <laughs> and motivation. I've been practicing since I arrived to the United States in 2002. Was it already American Idol? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually applied it and said, you're too good, Dr. Gamma, we will let yourself. You might win. <laughs> now, do these both vibrate? No. They don't. That's why it's called false. Which vibrate this one? Now, can anybody tell me the difference between aspiration pneumonia and when you have what? Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, when you're choking. C-H-O-K-I-N-G. Okay, because there's no more time, I will answer my own question. Oh. When you eat, what happens when you eat? Piece of meat, let's say, you're in the restaurant, in uh, Italian, the restaurant, restaurant, my favorite place, I am Italian. And Dr. Joe Gamo, related to Salvatore Ferragamo. <laughs> and guess what happens to the uh, piece of meat? It gets stuck where? Here. So there's a piece of meat there. Okay, pretend I am the patient with um, foreign airway obstruction, right? I'm choking, so the universal sign of choking is this. Okay, ask me now. Are you choking? Okay, go ahead. Yes, I am. Am I really choking? No. I just want you to know your phone number, especially the ladies. I just want attention. Now ask me this time. Are you choking? Yes, you are. Am I really choking? Can I produce the sound? No. Why not? The process of the piece of meat there in the larynx prevents the vibration of what? If it does not vibrate, there should be no sound. So if you ask someone, are you choking, sir? What do you do? Heimlich maneuver. Jeffrey, come over here. You will be the model. You will be analyzed in the, more, the history of YouTube. Okay, so this is, for example, the guy who is having... Okay, pretend. Okay, you go like this. <gasps> Don't smile. <laughs> <laughs> because you're smiling, then you're not choking, right? Anybody? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Pretend. Lights, camera, action! <laughs> I'm training you, my friend. This could make us earn. Next week, I'm going to be charging people for YouTube. Um, <laughs> you're going to make money? Of course. So you, I will be paying you to be acting in my show, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Whites, camera, action, go! <laughs> it's, a it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, pretend he's not smiling, okay? He's going like this. Look at my face. <gasps> okay, okay, it's okay. Okay, it's hard to act right there. Okay, last camera, action, go! So what do I do? I stay behind him, look at my, my legs, and I go like this, right? The flat surface of my thumb, in between the, the cyphoid process and the navel, in the middle, what do I do? Backward and upward what? Thrust. <laughs> okay, let's give you a big hand, yes? And hopefully there will be 30 million hits. 30 students plus one million. Okay, so when you go like this, you're creating a positive pressure, removing what? No, can you do it by yourself? You're alone. And you have, you're, <laughs> you're choking, what do you do? Am I going to use a chair that is moving like this? 
the stupid, right? So go to what? A stable table that is not going to move, and then what? So that hopefully it will come out. But before you do that, what should you do? Call 911. Call 911. Which phone am I going to use? Cell phone or landline? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, there is a landline. If they, why do they prefer a landline? It's easier to trace. Okay. And then, even if you cannot speak, you can dial the 911. Hopefully, that guy there is smart enough to. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they think it's a prank, right? A prank call. Oh my God. How could I, I'm dying here, and you think I'm a, it's a prank call? What the heck? If I die, I'll go after you in heaven, you know? <laughs> So what else? So that's, that's what is the difference between choking and aspiration pneumonia, it goes here. All the way to the lung. Aspiration pneumonia. Lung infection. Choking, a piece of it will just be here. In the larynx. See the very difference? Now what do you call the cells here? Type 1 and type 2 what? Pneumocyte. Which one produces the surfactant? And what is the purpose of surfactant? My dear, you're so loud it all easy go. Surfactant, type 2! <laughs> Why? Because it's right. Right. Love to read your notes. Okay. The way or the key to be successful in this class is not just reading your notes, but what? Memorizing and understanding. Wait, what's your name? Amy. She's turning red. She's turning red. Now I saw I saw you reading your notes, but we're about I'm about to give the quiz in two minutes or three minutes without looking at your notes. Tell me what you read and what is the answer to my question. What is the role of surfactant produced by the type two pneumocyte? Yes. Alveolar collapse. Alveolar collapse. Collapse means this air sac contains air. That air there, if it's not there, what happens? Collapse. Collapse means like a, an air, a, a balloon that will deflate. So instead of like this, it deflates like this. What happens now? Will you be able to have exchange of gases taking place? No. There will be no exchange of gases because the air sac does not contain air because the air sac collapsed. Air sac collapse or alveolar collapse is lung collapse. It's called atelec what? Atelectasis. So these are the key words that you should remember for the nursing board exam. Lung collapse. Now, what's your name again? Amy. So according to Amy, she gave me the right answer. It prevents the collapse of the lung or prevents atelectasis because you have one million of these in each lung. Can you imagine if all of this will collapse? And this is usually commonly seen in what? Premature babies or premature babies? Because the premature babies, there's type 2, does not produce enough what? That's why it's bad for them. And what do you think Dr. Gamma will tell you to give the baby? Of course, don't you love enough to me? You like surfactant? What do I tell you to give the baby? Surfactant! What kind? Synthetic or man-made? Synthetic is the same thing as man-made. Yes, of course. <laughs> See, we live in a world where everything is just, what is actually critical thinking? Common sense thinking. You lack surfactant? Give surfactant. You, you lack T3, T4 hormones, thyroid hormones, you give what? Levothyroxine, which is the synthetic form of the hormone. Does it make sense? Okay, going back to the I just gave you enough time to reach it for the answer. What is the mechanism upon which the, this particular surfactant substance, it's a chemical, it has an effect on the wall or the air sac membrane? Yes? So it's just surface tension. Okay. Why am I smiling at your answer? Because the answer is correct. It will reduce the surface tension. How many words do you have to remember? Reduce surface tension. Tension. That is the how to prevent the collapse of the air sac and the entire lung. When you say air sac collapse, that means the air sac becomes deflated. Another way for upon not only the lack of what about if you have a mucus here, mucus obstruction, mucus, mucus, and there's blood, can that also collapse? Yes. That's why I tell the nurse to what. Suction secretions, and there's a lot of mucus. So, the lack of surfactant in premature babies causes their air sac to collapse or the lung to collapse. Can they die of that? Yes. It's called infant respiratory distress syndrome or IRDS. So, hope and pray that if you get pregnant and you have a baby, that the baby is not premature. It's very challenging, difficult. If my babies were premature, 
I will take a leave from West Coast. I will be with that baby for the next two or three months. Goodbye, West Coast. Goodbye, UCLA. What's more important, my baby or West Coast or UCLA? Where's my baby? Can you the same genes? Because that baby has to be properly won. I'm not saying I don't want to rely on the nurses, but I don't. <laughs> one mistake of a nurse can kill the baby in one, one second. Do you know that the, when you suction PPA patients here, there's a proper technique? Like me, I'm not an expert because I don't suction secretions who does that, the nurse. But there, what if there's a nurse who will do it? Me! Like the patient is <laughs> Which is easier to suction, through the mouth or through the tracheostomy side? Because what happens if you suction, <laughs> what do they do with the catheter? <laughs> but here, easy. But you have to watch out. I remember before, there's a proper technique and proper timing, how many seconds. And then when you go like this, and when they start to cough, watch out for that mucus plug. Talk! <laughs> and that mucus plug contains blood, pus. <coughs> if you're wearing, <laughs> this will be filled with puck. So there's a technique. Stay on the side. <laughs> then, don't escape. <laughs> Proper way to, believe me, that will also come out in the nursing world. Proper way to suction the amount of time. Do you have any questions? I'll give you five minutes, come back by 7.30, we will have a quiz, okay? And that's enough for my...